sound bites, but look back on this first year. Well, number one, it's been a lot of fun. Been a lot of work and uh, very time consuming the first year because uh, you just have a lot of things you need to take care of to, to try to get things in, in the right direction. And, and uh, really happy how it all finished, you know, especially for our seniors, how, how we made the run and, and uh, can be really proud of, of the season. We, we definitely have never satisfied. We're, we've got a lot of work to do and we're excited about that. I had a team meeting on Monday and, and uh, started the, the 2016 campaign of, of, of where our expectations are and where we need to go. But uh, it's it's been awesome. It feels great. I you know I feel like I've been from Montana forever. Uh, my family is is really really settled in and, and loving things, and we're looking forward to our first Christmas in, in Montana and, and uh, getting on the road recruiting tomorrow. Coach, what did you feel? Did you learn from this first season up at the FCS? Um. You know, it was it was good to um, figure out just how defensively people were going to play us and, and uh, what we needed to, to do uh, with our defense to uh, shut some people down. We made a lot of adjustments throughout the season with our defense, and I think people could see that uh, the things that, that we were implementing game plan-wise were, were they were making us a much stronger defense, and, and uh, it was really exciting to see that and, and the way, you know, the ability to, to play man coverage in the back end enabled us to get more people in the box and, and let these guys go. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's, there's, there's not a whole, lot of, a whole lot of difference. It's just trying to figure out how, how people are going to do things, you know, as, as far as scheme goes. And, uh, uh, Personally, I learned better as the year went along on how to handle my time and control. You know, and, and uh, you, you gotta you gotta be a football coach too. And uh, and a lot of head coaches just do the media stuff, and and uh, and I'm coaching, and uh, and I'm calling plays, and, and I probably didn't do a great job early with with uh, uh, taking the time for football and. Uh, and, and limiting my, my time with you guys, you know. So uh, uh, I learned and I got better. Coach, obviously, you know, when you come in, it's, you know, beat Montana State, conference championship, you know, national title, obviously those are goals. But would you say that this year overall was a, a success? It, it's a successful season. It's not what we wanted, you know, and anybody's satisfied, it, it, they're, uh, they're on the, the wrong path. I felt like we should have been 10 and 2. Maybe eleven and one in the regular season. Uh, things should have went differently in, in Liberty. We definitely <clears throat> should have should have won the Cal Poly game and the, and the Weber State game. And, and you look back on those and you're, you're disappointed. In Liberty, we just didn't make plays uh, on either side of the ball when we needed to, and we had a chance to to uh, win that or take take control of that game and, and just didn't do it on the road and didn't handle. Uh, Playing on the road all that well. I loved what we did at Montana State, but other than that, we didn't play great on the road, and that's something that, that we definitely need to, to work on uh, for this next season. But uh, uh, successful, yes. You know, you always want to make the playoffs here, but you know, we're about championships and and uh, making a deep run, and that's what we're working for. Ty, with with how much adversity there was early in the season, you guys get to that midway point, it seemed like, uh, and then four and four, things really could have gone downhill, but. How much fun was that last month of the season when you guys got on that run? Yeah, I mean, you're always having a lot more fun and really in anything when you're winning. So, uh, yeah, it was a lot more fun. And I think it's just a testament to the type of type of dudes on our team that they showed enough uh, resolve to not just pack up, pack up camp and go home. And everyone was committed to getting better. And uh, I think it showed in the, those last four games. So. And looking back at that wild play at the end of Idaho State, did, did that feel like a catalyst? I mean, did that really kick you guys off, just get you a little bit of luck that you needed? I mean, sure. I mean, it was kind of like God was God was looking out for us at that point, and we just knew that if uh, something like that could happen, then uh, we we're in for something special. So, uh, I mean, definitely it was a good morale booster to win that game. Ty, when you're playing, obviously it's all about the team and what we're doing as a group here, trying to accomplish a goal. But now that this is done, you just completed <coughs> one of the great individual seasons defensively that the school's ever seen. 
what sort of satisfaction do you take about the accomplishments that you've had and obviously the, the uh, opportunities that are still out there for you awards wise but just what you've done as a, as a, as a defensive end in the school yeah I mean I think everyone that comes in here you hope to uh, that's what you're working for you want to leave a legacy and you want to have an impact on the program and hopefully as a player you can lead the place better than than you came in and I, I hope that I've been able to do that uh, during my time here and uh I mean, it's, it's cool because I had such great coaches and I've had so many people that have helped me get to this point. And so, I mean, to say that I was like me or anything would be a, a disjustice to the, an injustice to the people that uh, have helped me get here. But I mean, I'm extremely grateful for my coaches and my teammates and my parents, obviously, that have helped me get here. What are you going to remember from your time here? I mean, uh, yeah, the games are awesome. I mean, I'm, of course, I'm going to remember running out of that stadium. I think that's an experience that uh, you know, it just can't be replaced by anything else. But I think most of all, I'm going to remember the time in the in the locker room with the dudes, just uh, joking around and laughing and having a great time. It's what most people don't get to see, but I think it's what really makes this place special as far as being a player is just the relationships that you build with people, and uh, that's what I'm going to miss the most. Do you get any time to kind of relax, or is it kind of going to training mode, or what's it? What are you doing? <clears throat> Uh, I mean, just for my own sanity, I'm going to take a couple of weeks off and uh, just try to recharge, and then yep, then it's on to the on to the next phase. So definitely going to go home and enjoy time with the family, and then then get to training. Coach, you said you know you're hitting the road tomorrow and back onto the onto the recruiting trail and all of that. When is the space that you're going to have to be able to reflect, recharge, put it in neutral for a while to gear up and, and heading into next year? Uh, once we get off the the road we get into this dead period uh, I think it's December 19th it, it'll be great I, I was sitting in the hot tub with my youngest Sam the other night he said dad what do you want for Christmas I said I want a couple days off you know and and I uh, haven't had that for for a long time and and uh, uh, so I look forward to that. It's just just getting up and hanging out with my kids and, and my wife and and uh, just enjoying this place because Missoula is such an awesome place and and uh, we just haven't had that much time to, to really truly in, enjoy it and and uh, you know so that's what I'm looking forward to. But recruiting, you know, th this is the time when you win games. You, you've got to you got to do a great job in recruiting. We have, we've got a great start on it, and uh, I think we've got 11 commitments and and uh, don't have that many more spots left and, and just got to go out and, and make sure everything stays where, where they're at. And, and I think the recruits know that, that something special is going to be, be coming down the, the road and, and uh, they definitely want to be a part of this. You're already looking at the 2016 roster a little and I know cuts are a part of that as well. There's already been some misinformation floating around today. Can you talk to us a little bit about who's not coming back? I think I think everybody on Twitter's got that figured out. You know, I don't I don't need to comment on that stuff because there's so much misinformation on the on the internet. It just it's it's really really disappointing how unprofessional this stuff is to put young men's names on social media that I haven't even talked to, and and then you can you can delete the tweet, but you've already done the damage when you put their name out there, and it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong. And I have no comment on the roster. The roster will be set before spring ball, and that's it. You know, and, and you guys need to figure it out that saying that sources say is not a professional way to report things. You need to know what's going on. And when I tell you somebody is, is not on the roster, then you should report it. But it's wrong. It's wrong for a, a young man to have to deal with that. And that's all I got to say about that. Bob's year, first year comes to an end. What changes, if any, will be in store through the off season, anticipating a new season uh, next fall? You know, we're we're going to continue to work on on things, and and after a one year getting, you know, going into a, an off season where you truly know everyone, and we'll have exit meetings when we get back in in January, and and really discuss individually with guys of, of where we need to go with with the program and and. Uh, uh, you know the weight room's a big part of that, and and uh, uh, just taking care of the little things. And you know we 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 had a great season, but we continually took a couple steps forward and then three or four steps back. And and we, we want to get to the point where we don't do that anymore, and we're not having to worry about uh, little things and, and just uh, 
distractions. You know, you don't need distractions when you're trying to build something special. And and uh, so recruiting is, is huge. Off-season program is, is huge. And, and accountability. You know, if you're going to be on this football team, you got to be accountable every day. And, uh, uh, you know, we've got to have everybody on our team that, that have this, the same type of work ethic and uh, way of doing things that, that guys like Tyrone have. And when we get to everybody, when we get everybody on the program to, to do that, we're there. And uh, we, we can't have the attitude that, hey, I've got my scholarship, now I can cruise for five years and, uh, and ride off in the sunset and get free school. You gotta earn it every day. Coach, uh, you know, since you came on, since you were hired, the, the pedal's been all the way down for you. Uh, within just figuring things out for yourself and and also to get this sort of into this program now heading into year number two do you feel I want to say that it'll be easier but because there is you know a history there already that, that the preparedness is going to be greater and that you will you know be able to be more effective as you go in the things that you do yes and and, and I think that I can I can Knowing how to do things, every time you take a new job, it's 10 times harder because it's just the smallest things of figuring out how things uh, are done. When you're at another school, you know exactly how things are done and, and basically it's the same thing every single year. It's just a different, you know, it's just a different year. And coming here, the smallest thing you have to ask everybody, well, how is this done? How is that done? And you, you would think there's a lot of carryover, but there's not between institutions on just the, the smallest things. And, and uh, the biggest thing is getting to know these players and how they tick and how to, how to motivate them and, and, and how, how we work with those guys is, is going to be huge. And, and there was a lot of emphasis on things once I got hired that didn't make us a good football team or a better football team, but they needed to be done. And uh, uh, and I wanted them to be done. Can, can you give an example of something? Well, like driving 4,200 miles across Montana, you know? <laughs> I wanted to get to know everybody, and I needed to get to know everybody. And now we're gonna cut that back a little bit and condense it. I was on the road for about eight weeks, and, and we're gonna try to condense that to where I can spend more time on cut-ups traveling and meeting with other staffs and, and continually getting better as, as a football coach. And sometimes uh, people can forget about that, that you are actually a football coach and, and you need time to do, do those things. So that's when we can do it in May and uh, April, May, you know, sometimes in February that you can get, you can get with other staffs and uh, talk about things. And I didn't get to do that last year. I got hired and, and we, we uh, got out on the road recruiting immediately. We had signing date and, uh, and and then I was in Palm Springs doing some stuff and I never had a chance to get with anybody in February and get better as a football coach and uh, never had any time in May to, to get with anybody. So yeah, that's a, it's a long answer, but there were things that I really wanted to get done in my first year and I think we accomplished that. And, now we can back back down a little bit with, with that stuff and, and get better at football. So obviously the players like the season because they're playing and that's when they get to go out there on their phone. But what is it like for you when it's kind of a full-time thing and, and do you enjoy the off season and just kind of talk about the grinds of a season and the grinds of getting out on the road and recruiting? You know, this football season was was a lot of fun, and uh, it, it was hard to get up on Sunday and, and get going. I really, really struggled. Uh, I, I could have slept in, and I, and I was up very early, and, and uh, couldn't get my mind off of not not being still in the season. Um, being a football coach, the years go by very fast because the year is is cut, you know, broken up into to different areas, and, and uh, you're you're always doing something different. You go from the season to really grinding on the road recruiting and and the holidays and then you've got your national convention and then you've got your signing date and getting ready for spring ball and then you got your summer camps and and uh, uh, then right back into fall camp so it's always broken up and it, and it really does fly by and uh, I enjoy everything you know that that's the whole point if you don't enjoy recruiting then you shouldn't be in this business if you don't you know I, I am very competitive as far as the recruiting process because I want to go into a house and, and change a kid's mind and and uh, get him to come to play to, 
play at Montana, and uh, I enjoy the X and O part of it. You know, some guys are more into to to the uh, recruiting and and uh, the meeting the 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 people, the program, all that kind of stuff. I love X and O, and I love the part, the football part of it. And uh, I really enjoy people, you know, so our GSA stuff is awesome. I love to be around people, and, and Montana is my kind of place. You, you grow up in Nebraska, everybody you meet in Nebraska, you'd like to hang out with. And that's what some of my friends that came into town, everybody they met at the tailgates, they're like, man, these people are awesome. You know, and that I enjoy that part of it too. So I've really got a, a pretty good life. It's very busy, but I really, really enjoy what I'm doing. And, and it is 100 miles an hour. It's not going to stop. This was a bit of a, a year of the quarterback for Montana, and not in a good way. Um, what do you think this season would have been like if the injury bug hadn't bitten? Uh, you know, you, you'd like to. I, I think that that our offense could have continued to to uh, move forward. And we had to take a step back with it, with the injuries, and and uh, you find a way, you know. You, and you're with that. You, you, you do that a number of times throughout your your career. You just find a way to to win enough games to to, to get you through those those injuries. And that's that's what we had to do. And and it was tough there for a while. When we we hit that four and four, and you're looking at the schedule that we've got coming up, it was it was very tough. And our our uh, you know, Chad McKenna did a great job of finding a way for us. Uh, I wish that we could have kept Brady healthy and, and continued to, to move forward with, with the offense, and, and I think we would have been better off uh, in the end. But uh, that's, that's just football, and people go through that. And, and this year, not only us, but you look across the country, a lot of people had their, their quarterbacks injured, and you have, you have to deal with that, and the next man has to step up and, and do a great job. Um, who knows what would happen, but these guys grinded through it, so it didn't. It didn't really matter because we ended up with with Brady back in there and having a great run, and and we ended up facing a very good football team, and it was it was tough in that environment, and uh, they, they were very good, and they, they're probably going to show that here in the next few weeks uh, of how how good they really are. Ty, the last seventy two hours just emotionally how have they been for you obviously you know disappointing very disappointing on Saturday but now you look back careers at here is done but maybe your football career is not yet done and you look to the future and all of that you're kind of in the brackish <coughs> waters leaving college and entering the next phase what, what, what's your sort of state of being right now yeah I mean it's kind of surreal I mean I'm not sure if it's really sunk in that I've done uh playing football here you know for four years I found my identity in being a Montana football player and now that's that's over and now it's on to the next phase so I mean in that in that case it's a little surreal surreal I think uh, for me personally I've just put so much pressure on myself uh, during the season that it's kind of a uh, you know a, a weight has been lifted off my shoulders almost I feel like um, not having the pressure of just the grind of the season I mean obviously I wish we were still going but uh but we're not, and so now it's you know for me it's just focus on the next thing. I mean it's finals this week and trying to finish out my academic career, and then uh, I mean everything else that comes with trying to get to the next level. So, coach, obviously seniors graduate every year, um, but it's not only a big class, but you have guys that are marking the record books, and then guys like Ben Roberts that come in for one year and do what they do. How tough is it going to be to kind of replace you know this uh, this class? Really tough, you know. It's more emotionally than anything, and and uh, the football side of it, you you sit around with recruiting and you're stressed out and you can't sleep because you're trying to figure out how, how do I replace a guy like this and and how do you replace Jamal and and uh, and, and Ben and and uh, uh, John Schmang and Kendrick Van Akron and and Maya. And, I mean, it goes down the list. I mean, we had these guys at our banquet the other day, and and it was a a long line of really, really good football players, and that's hard. But the the emotional side, you just miss them, you know. And and uh, uh, I know, you know, for uh, the guys that that we retain from the other staff, they've been around these guys for you know every single day almost for for four or five years, and all of a sudden they're gone. You know, that's hard. And and uh, we spend more time with these guys than we do our own kids, and, and that that's the the hard part. So. Uh, it's a little bit of an em empty nest feeling when, when they leave, and, and uh, you just got to try to go find the ne next great guy. And, and uh, what's awesome about guys like Tyrone is, 
is when when people talk about a certain position or a certain player, you always th their name always pops up in your head. You know, we got to find another Tyrone Holmes. I've already said it in recruiting meetings. You got to find that guy. We got to save a scholarship for that guy that that uh, may may uh, be available late. You know, right before sign day, a guy might might become uh, available just like Tyrone Holmes. We need need another guy like that. You know, and I I had a guy at Colorado Mines set the Division two sack record. And uh, you bring those guys' name up all the time. He ended up signing with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I hope I'm talking about him. He's going to get a chance. And I can't wait to see him play in that bowl game and whip up, whip up on some people. So uh, it's hard. And, and uh, if you don't get emotionally attached to these players, then it's not worth it. It's not worth all, all the time that you, you put into it. And, and uh, that's what makes it fun. That's what, them, that's what makes it special you know, in the good times. You know, and, and it gets you through in the bad times, too. Yeah, that kind of leads me into, I know you already have a couple transfers at, at certain positions. Is there any one particular type of player position that you're kind of targeting you know, for this offseason off besides just building them? We need some D linemen. You know, we, we need some older guys at, at the D line position. We need some older guys at the receiver position. We need an older guy at the quarterback position. Um, we need um, an older guy in the, in the secondary, you know, and then the rest of them we're going to build it from the ground up and fill in with, with high school guys. But uh, there's some definite, definite holes that uh, you don't see from this team, you know, we came in here and we had such a big senior class. You know, you, you didn't really s truly see the holes in in, uh, in our depth chart, but they're there and we've got to fill them uh, th this off season. And it can't be with just high school kids.